Hey everyone, I am your bad boy, host of Life Her Podcast. And as y'all know, we are sponsored by Havana Lounge, but I have something real special today because we actually sitting with the owner today and it is like really dope for him to be here. I'm happy to be here. Yes. <laughs> say, say what's up to the Lumpo, y'all. <laughs> Don't know what's going on. Yes. So I'm really excited to talk to you because I'm more, I want to know more about your background than actually what you're doing now, because a lot of times people don't know where you come from and how far you worked to get where you at today. Yeah, yeah. It. Um, I'm Nigerian, so uh, my name is Dalapo Adetokumbo Lukman and Rinkatola. It's a mouthful, but Nigerian, the Yoruba tribe. Both parents came over here, and I grew up in the Midwest, Chicago, and. Um, you know, we were always, you know, hustling, doing the business. Right. Um, I've got nine siblings, so it was always a bunch of kids, and we were always just, you know, competing with one another, like healthy competition, right? Right, right. And um, so, and then the Nigerian, you know, mentality, but you know, the African mentality is just to, you know, to 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 work. You know? And uh, I live in Atlanta now. Um, I came out here, went to Morehouse, and that's what brought me to Atlanta, and I've been out there ever since. Okay, so what what creates the drive that you have to just keep going and being so passionate about a lot of things you do? Because what I've noticed, you are passionate. And yeah, they you take burn. what you do serious. Hey, yeah, it's, <laughs> man, because you know, man, I tell you, this life is so it's so different, right? I saw something on Instagram the other day, and it's the it's the brother that that's the scientist that's really really smart. I forget his name, forgive me, but he was saying. More people, uh, more people haven't lived than will live. That's true. And I couldn't understand what he was saying, and he explained it. He said, in the you know, in the mating process, you know, you've got millions and millions of sperm trying to court with one egg, right? You've got so for you to actually be here through that process, you're here with all those other millions of potential lives. Mm-hmm. They'll never see the earth. So we have to take this time and really be special and, and, and do the best we can while we're here because it's not a mistake that we're here. And there's a reason that we're here because the odds were against us. So when he put it like that, I'm like, man, shoot, let's, I mean, what else? Yeah. What else can we do, right? <laughs> yes, that yeah. is true. You know, it's crazy the way you put that is, I've always lived, but I started living more after mm-hmm. I lost my mother and my husband. Mm-hmm. And it created me to develop a different type of mindset and a different type of discernment when it comes to people. I've become, it's more quiet and more observant. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wanting to feel a person in a spiritual realm mm-hmm. instead of actually just talking huh. to them and stuff. So you, you can hear more when you listen and pay attention. Exactly. <laughs> and I notice you're like that. Yeah, and it, all, it, it but it also gives you confidence. It does, you know, especially when you lose someone close to you. Um, I, I, um, I lost my, and I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, I lost my younger sister. She was out in Dallas many years ago, and she got robbed, wow. um, and they shot her. And this is my younger sister, you know, and, and it was so brutal the attack. And every time I get nervous or I think about you know, something that's kind of shaking me. I'm thinking, you know, my little sister went through something that I can't even imagine. So there's not anything on this planet that I should be worried about that should shake me, right? Right. Because that was the ultimate. So, I mean, I use sometimes those tragedies or missing a loved one to kind of fuel your purpose. Yes. Because at the end of the day, they're still watching, they're still pushing, Mm -hmm. you know? And um, if you, any, any scenario, if you think about it, can be positive. And I try to make sure that that loss doesn't define my life, mm-hmm. right? I'm, she, she wouldn't want me to be stuck there, but it will push me to get some other stuff done. And, and I'm telling you, when I get, when, when something <laughs> shakes me, I think about her and I'm like, she went through it. There's nothing I can do, yeah. right? Yes, that is so true. Because my mom was supposed to start this podcast with me. See? And so, the way it grew so fast in these past, it'll be almost three years, 
it just grew so rapidly and I know she has something to do with it. And just by me just creating it to be so authentic. Mm -hmm. And I, I know what you mean as far as that push of someone so close yeah. to you and just wanting you to thrive. Yeah, I, it's fuel, man. And trust me, your mom is, is moving levers and, oh, and yeah, making stuff happen. That's a thing. <laughs> she, she definitely is. She got me busy. <laughs> That's what's up. For sure. So once you um, moved to Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. went to Morehouse and everything, when did you actually start getting into becoming a business owner and involved in film and everything? Um, you know, I started being a business owner when I back to Chicago as a kid. Okay. I, um, I had, and I'm going to date myself, I had a paper route. Okay. And I'm going to tell you this story. It's a funny story. So I, <laughs> I go over, you know, there's a lot of us, so we had to share everything. Mm -hmm. like we had board games, but it was everybody's. We had this game, it was everybody's. But, um, you know, share with my nine siblings. So I went over a friend's house. He was, he was, you know, a mainstream white dude. And he had all the toys. You can imagine, like, all of them. And I, I'd go over there and I'd play And One time I said, how do you have all these toys? And he said, well, I got a paper route. He said, so I'd take my money and my mom lets me buy whatever I want. I said, oh, a paper route. So, um, so when he was moving from the neighborhood, he gave me his paper route. Okay. I actually got another paper route. I ended up having like three paper routes. Did you? And this is the crazy part. In Chicago, it gets so cold and I hate yeah. the cold, right? So I hired people to do the paper routes. And I was sitting at home. How old were you? I was like 11. That's so, crazy. So I was sitting at home, I had everybody running <laughs> the paper routes. I paid them good. Right. I paid them, but um, you know, and, and you know, I had to get up in the morning and roll, roll up the papers, but I had a team that was taking it out. So that was my first dip into being an entrepreneur. And my dad kind of, you know, he was, he was, you know, he was calling me lazy. He was like, son, you got all these paper routes, you still in the bed. I said, dad, I got it, it's done, I got it. <laughs> so um, now fast forward coming to Atlanta, just Atlanta is the city of hustle. Yeah. You know, if, I mean, you cannot be surprised by what the next person is doing because somebody is doing something in the A. And you had, for me, I had to get that in my head that they, go, they look like me. Yeah. Like in Chicago, they might not look like yeah, me. But true. in Atlanta, they look like me and they're doing it. So um, I had to learn really quick that, you know, I got to get my game up and surround myself, you know, with the right people. So I try to, like you, um, put myself in a role with people that are a lot smarter than me. And, Yes. And, you know, and, you know, things just started working themselves out. Um, my parlay into film came into, you know, I was, I was, I was engaged to a, a famous actress that's um, doing very, very well and, and just helping her. Uh -huh. um, you know, I started really understanding um, the film business and um, then it parlayed into me just doing, you know, some other things myself. Wow. So what do you like the most? Just like doing the film production or actually just managing your lounges and doing dipping in other things? I think, I think all of it. Really? I like doing all of it because, it, because it, keeps you, it keeps you grinding. Like if uh, it's exhausting, but you know, if you read those self-help books, they'll tell you that you're supposed to have seven different income streams in order to be truly successful. Yes, that's true. If one goes bust and the other one to help. So uh, restaurants is one way to do it. But if, you, if you're smart about it, um, you can have some overlay. So for example, I have restaurants. And in the restaurants, I have um, opportunities for live music, stages, and things like that. So I have um, also managed some artists. So I let my artists come and perform at the restaurant so that they can get exposure. And you know, they can hone their craft. And then um, when they hone their craft, I take them and some of the music that they do, I put it into films. Oh, so if you look at it the right way, there's always a way to kind of make sure that they're all connected together. Yeah. yeah. And you know, a lot of people, when they say seven streams of income, a lot of times people do a seven different things that's not relatable mm -hmm. at all. And when everything is, coming together and relatable, mm -hmm. you will find yourself 
seeing the you know your money start to generate into mm-hmm. many forms and you're mm-hmm. like man i could add this this and this and, and it just becomes something just so amazing it's a beautiful thing because but you have to think outside of the box right so you, do. you, you don't you think restaurants and you you don't think uh it can relate to the film industry but guess what when you have a restaurant um there there's always a rap party there's a yeah. premiere party Right? Yeah. There is special meetings or table reads. If you look at it the right way, you can always find that overlap. And um, regardless of, you know, the vertical that you put yourself in, you just gotta think outside of the box. Yeah, you definitely too. <laughs> so, um, with you being a business owner and I'm a business owner myself, when do you find out your me time? like time for you mm-hmm. to take out from everything that you're doing because sometimes it can become overwhelming it can um that's a really you know that's a tough question because because you're always working right the, yes. the businesses that i see that do well are owners who are present it's like being a parent 99 percent that 99 percent of the job is just being there you, you just gotta be in the fold. You gotta be in the house, um, and it's the same with the business. So you just you have to be there. So the more you take away from being there, the more you leave exposure for the business. But to your point, in order for you to su- survive and sustain, you, you gotta have the me time. Yes, you do. So I I give myself an out. So I work towards that out. Meaning, I say I'm gonna be in the restaurant business for ten years going to be in the film industry for 12, 15 years. And so at least in my mind, I'm thinking there's a light at the end of the tunnel because I don't want to be married to the game indefinitely. And then I take time out to, to like, you know, have that self help day, you know, so I'll do, I'll go to the best hotel and maybe order room service. I'll still get some work done, but I'm sleeping in, you know, the hotel okay. bed, I'm eating for and those kind of things is almost like a mini vacation for me, so okay. recharge the battery. Um, but I'll do I'll do things like that. To kind of, what, what do you do? So maybe I can steal some of your ideas. Oh, <laughs> I do a lot. Um, I I prioritize my time a lot. Okay. Um, because I have a janitorial company, I have a daycare center, and I do my podcasting, and I'm getting ready to open up a podcast studio. Well. So each day I make it prioritize for what I have to do that day Mm -hmm. and I just break it down so once I have certain days Mm -hmm. say on what I'm doing I will pick a weekend and I will do a weekend trip so a Saturday and Sunday I may just get on the road and drive to Chicago or Mm -hmm. Detroit something nearby New York or whatever and I will be there even if it's a day Mm -hmm. I fly there a day or drive there a day I usually do that because I love nature. Mm-hmm. So long as I'm like getting the, my nature core yeah. in there, <laughs> it rejuvenates me. So I just make sure I do that. And um, I don't answer my phone for everybody. I have a, um, well, having an iPhone, you could have your, your do not disturb, but you yeah. can have it on the focus on personal people. Okay. So I have people in there that I don't mind talking to when I know they're not gonna call me and ask okay. me for something. <laughs> so Guys, if she I doesn't do answer, that. you know that she weren't in the, the little stuff. So. <laughs> yes, I I make sure I do that because you know, being a business, a lot of people can ask you for things and they count your money. They yep. do all types yeah. of things, and it, it could become a cruel environment. Mm-hmm. So I just make sure I just keep myself mellow. Cause I'm I'm a calm person, like I'm always like this. Like what's, what's your son? Leo. Leo. Mm-hmm. Leo's a not calm. Oh, I'm very calm. You know? Okay. Very. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it takes a lot for me to get like wired. I mean, a whole lot. Okay. But most of the time, I'm, I love communicating. Communicating gets you far. Okay. It okay. does. Uh, <laughs> that's good. I like. I mean, going back to what you were saying about nature changing the scenery yes. is so big because even if it's nothing for an hour or a day or something, it, like you said, it rejuvenates you. Mm-hmm. And it's something about taking yourself out of your current situation and going someplace else. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. Seriously, because you're going to a wholesale, right? Mm-hmm. 
if you go into nature, you will become rejuvenated because it's a natural, earthy thing for us to do. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I, I saw something that they, <laughs> they, uh, they were saying that we need to get our feet on the ground and stay grounded. And yes, all that's of that. one of the things. Yes, and I and I'm just thinking to myself, I haven't really put my feet in the grass since I don't know when, but. They're saying that that is something that, you know, all of us, we need to do. We need to just really connect to the earth and get our feet on the ground. It, it has health benefits. It helps our sales and things like that. So, yeah, yeah that's cool. Yes, that's important. I, I got to do it. <laughs> yes. So, um, have you ever failed in business? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, you know, it's a, it's a journey, right? Yes. So, snippets, um, you know, as you travel um, along the way, you fail. Like, so for example, when I first started um, uh, thinking about a restaurant, I was going to open a restaurant with, uh, you know, uh, you ever watch Married to Medicine? Yes. Okay, so Dr. G, it's a really good friend of mine, went to okay. school together, high school. And so we were going to open a restaurant together. So okay. we, we both, we, we went out there, we signed the lease, everything was good, and then uh, something happened where they snatched the lease from us last minute. So wow. that was a fail, failed opportunity, and we kind of lost interest. In fact, he ended up going in a different direction and opening up another clinic. And you know, you know, he's a very respected and, and um, uh, I, I want to say highly awarded, you know, doctor. So he had other things to do, and I just said, you know what? Let me let me try again. And I connected with some other people. A uh, shout out to uh, Tony and Joe. Uh, they they are my partners who own Blue Lagoon with me, and we ended up opening Blue Lagoon. But the first effort was a fail, right? Because right. It, you know we couldn't get it off the ground, even though there was the effort there. So, but it's part of the story, part of the journey, and um, I think the thing that you know that I take I take away from that is if one door shuts, you another know, one will open. yeah, another one will open. Don't stop. Yes, and that and that's very important. Um, I'm not gonna say I like failure, but a lot of times when I do fail, I know once I get back up, it's, it's gonna be something it's amazing, be something, right? Like it's amazing. Always like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but most people once they fall, they're like, oh, you know, yeah, want to give up. They're stuff. They're like, I'm done. No, it gave me more ammo. Yeah, I <laughs> like that. Like this shooter. <laughs> Just keep That's going. Good. So um, I know you're into film and everything, mm-hmm. and it's funny because my best friend, she's into film a lot in uh, one of the production studios here okay. in Atlanta. She's actually the one that dropped me off. What's um, her name? Charmaine, well, Kimberly. Kimberly. Yeah, Kimberly Epps. Um, Shout out to Kimberly Epps. <laughs> <laughs> so I see that you have um, Water Boys coming out soon? Yeah, Water Boys, um, written and directed by Coke Daniels. Okay. Um, it's coming out later later this year. We've got Quality Control that's doing the music. Okay. Um, we've got Quavo in it. We've got Lala in it. We've got uh, Rockman Dunbar. We've got uh, Damani, T.I. Sun in it. We've got um, a lot of um, Akili, who is the lead. Akili, don't kill me. Um, <laughs> and it's really a coming of age story about the kids who. Like in Atlanta, there's like this whole movement, movement with kids running up yeah, to the, the water, water, selling you water. Yes. Some are doing it the right way, and some are doing it the wrong way. Right. right? Um, and it just it's it, it's going to chronicle the story of young kids who are turning into entrepreneurs and dealing with what's going on in the street. You know, that's really good because a lot of people put out the negativity about mm-hmm. children on how they go about things. Mm-hmm. But for you guys to create it as a film and it, it'd be a positive perspective from it, it'd be very motivating for other yeah. children to actually see it in a different perspective. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing that you guys turned yeah, it into we're a excited. Film. Yeah, we're excited about that one. Now, it's going to be one of the classics, so I can't wait for the world to see that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can't wait either. I love black film. Yeah. I, I don't care how low budget people will say it is or however, it, it, you got to look at the potential mm-hmm and the quality of it. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people, they may just begin starting, but they need the support for you mm-hmm. to be able to keep going. Yep. Yeah. Now, we, um, I did a movie this past Christmas uh, that BET bought, 
that um, it was called Sound of Christmas with uh, Neil, Andrea, Sonia, really? to see I that. Really? I didn't see that, that. It's, a good, it's a good one. Really? I'm going to have to go see that. Check out some of the, the other stuff that I did. Okay, that is amazing. So tell me about Dating COVID. Uh, Dating COVID is an upcoming movie um, that is really, really interesting. Um, and I, I don't even want to <laughs> give it away because the story is so, is so unique. But um, COVID is the name of the gentleman. So, um, COVID is his name? It's his name. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. So For a lot real. of people think, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but um, it, I, I, you know, it's really, really good. You I, don't want to say I don't want to give it away. I don't want to give it away because it, imagine dating the perfect guy. Right? Uh-huh. And, and. He turned into COVID. You no, know, he doesn't turn into COVID, <laughs> but he, he, okay, let me just give you a question. So you met a guy. He's perfect. He's everything you want to build. He's got the money. He's, 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 he's got the conversation. Everything is perfect. And then you guys are trying to, you know, take it to the next level. And he says, well, hold on. I, so I got something I got to tell you. Well, what if he told you he had HIV? And if he told you he had HIV, would you still be into him the way he could still protect himself, but he wanted to date you? These are real questions and that's real a, things that's a real, that real happens life question. every day. Yeah, it is. Now, I'm not saying that that's what COVID is about. <laughs> but I am saying, watch the movie. You will not be disappointed. <laughs> so these are questions that we're, we're going to challenge you. Uh, yeah, that is challenging, though. So would you be gone or would you, you know, just go? We just going to go and move on with okay. our show all right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's so go. Uh, what about the GOAT? The GOAT. The GOAT is, think of American Idol for motivational speakers, right? Okay. So we take the best mo motivational speakers from around the country. They, fl they flew in, and we created a competition for them. And uh, we had some mentors, some of the uh, great orators here. We got Jamal, Pastor Jamal Bryant uh, to kind of coach some of these people. We got uh, Willie Moore. We got some of the um, notable uh, orators, uh, the motivational speakers here in Atlanta, kind of coach them, and we identified a winner, and uh, they get a cash prize, and, and it's it's really, really good. It's really, really, really good. Yeah, if you like the competition feel of American Idol, but instead of singing, you like to hear those inspiring words, and, and, and this is this is gonna be the show for you. That's good. Yeah. So it's filmed already? It's already it's in the be coming yeah, out. It's coming when out. it come out? Yeah. It's gonna be coming out this quarter, by the end of the month. Wow, you've been working. You got to grind. Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> so when you when you do movies and everything, do you implement your business in it? Do it end up being a film production with space? Some of some of them. Um, I uh, some of them like uh, I shot a film that BET bought called Scheme Queens. It has um, a whole bunch of people. Ernest uh, Ernest Dan is in there. Um, B. Simone is in there, um, Jackie O is in there, a bunch of really, um, Country Wayne is in there. Okay. We shot that at my restaurant, uh, Blue Lagoon, Blue and Blue. shout out to Cass Beatles who directed and, and wrote it. Um, but we shot at Blue Lagoon, and I think we also shot some of the scenes here as well. So, okay. to answer your question, yes, depending okay. on the project, you know, I try to get, we try to get creative. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. So, what you're having your hands into everything right now, where do you see yourself? I will, I'm going to give you three years. Mm -hmm. Like, as far as, like, the area of goal that you want. Because I know you say I'll give myself 10 years for this and 10 years yeah. for that. So what's your three years? I mean, the three year where I see myself in three years related to film yes. is uh, having a strong hold on a platform that allows me to... Um, bring independent up, up and coming um, artists to uh, have a home. Because right now we've got so many people who are creating content and they're creating yes. good content, but they might not have a name to it. Uh, they might not have a distribution uh, deal, but it's just sitting on the shelf. Yeah. And um, if you go on, I don't care if you go on Hulu, you go on uh, Amazon, you, you start to see the same stuff over and over you again. Do. 
there's so much more content and you got to give people a vehicle to show it. So I hope in three years that I would have made um, my own contribution to allow some of those indie films to, to have a home. That is, yeah. that is so amazing because that's my plan for what my podcast studio I have yeah. now. Yeah. Like I live in Akron, so only thing people know of Akron is LeBron James. Mm. So with um, LeBron, his school is close to me. He okay. has like, he almost got a whole street on lock okay. right now with the things he's doing. So with my studio being downtown, I'm bringing a lot more attraction to it with me having my podcast studio there. And it's actually, it's a, um, it's a musical, I don't want to say musical, but it's like a club beneath me. Okay. And it's more of like rock. Okay. Rock music and everything. And then it's a jazz band where they play jazz and everything. It's okay. called Blue. Blue Jazz is next door to me. Mm -hmm. So everything surrounding me has something to do with music or film. Okay. So now whenever the guests come in, mm -hmm. they get interviewed by me first mm -hmm. and then they want content. They can utilize my space for that as well. So it's a lot of potential there. Mm -hmm. I have a whole vision for it. I'm just pacing myself mm -hmm. with it and make sure I connect with the right people to keep doing it. But it's, it's needed a lot. Mm -hmm. Our times is changing for us to actually give people that type of space and motivation mm -hmm. to do things. Because a lot of people, you know, some people in, where I live, they don't want to go to always Cleveland. And then sometimes people from Cleveland wants to come my mm -hmm. way too. So that's, that's I like good. I like that you have that approach. Uh, I think that, it, you know, in, in life, and I don't want to get too philosophical, but in life, you do good. The people who do good are people who are making ways for other people. Yes. Not necessarily self-serving. If you have a servant attitude, you always end up doing well. So taking the approach of, okay, how can I not only help myself, but help other people, you'll find out that the universe will conspire it to does. help you get to where you want to go because you're not just thinking about yourself. Yes. And I think that formula is so, it's so important, but people are in survival mode. People always think, me, me, me. Mm -hmm. But if you let go, if you let go and let God and say, hey, I'm trying, I've used me, I'm trying to help not only myself, but other people. Yes. You find out that you, you, you have the whole team behind you. Definitely. That's where my blessings come from. That's exactly. <laughs> that's, that's where, that's definitely where. Yes, that's where a lot of my blessings come from. I'm like the root of my family, the root of my community. Mm -hmm. I had a youth program with like 500 kids okay. in my town. And I've done so much in a community and it just, it makes me feel good. That's, yeah. that's therapy for me. Yeah, and I love the outcomes that God gives me mm -hmm. when I do serve people that are in need or mm -hmm. people that just need yep. anything. It's, it's really, it feels good. Now, I'm gonna ask you something real quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take <laughs> over the interview here. I see. Because you got, you, you've got, you know, your hand, you know, influencing some kids and you're in Ohio. So who's the basketball goal? Who's the goat? Is it LeBron or is it MJ? I mean, what, what are you Who's the basketball goat? Yeah, the greatest of all time. You, you Kobe. Kobe. I love Kobe. Okay. I love, I'm an all the way Kobe fan. I love LeBron, mm -hmm. though. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But as a player, I love Kobe. Okay. I do. I can't switch up. Okay. <laughs> you have Jordan, though. So you love LeBron. You love, is Jordan in there in the, in the conversation? I mean, Jordan is in there. Okay. Jordan is in there, too. Okay. Right. Yeah, but um, I could say what I do love about LeBron, I wish they expose it more, is yes. a lot that he does. Yes, he has he has apartments for his families at his school. Mm -hmm. He has a uh, medical clinic he's opening. He has a space where people can have their weddings at every day. He has another, he actually getting another apartment mm -hmm. complex built for his families also. Wow. And he done basketball courts and he's done a lot. Mm -hmm. It's just not out there like that. It seemed like they try to find something mm -hmm. wrong, but it's so well, much it's so much it. right that he does. I wish it was just exposed more. Well, 
Pink Larry. Pink people know. That's good. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know all of that. So. Yes, yes. He He's doing big stuff in Akron. Okay. It really is. He yeah. pours into him a lot. And it's a whole street of it. It's like a whole mm-hmm. block. And then you turn, it's apartments. And then bigger apartments that's being built now. Probably, it looks like it'll be about maybe 50 to 60 families in it. Wow. Probably. Think about that impact in like 50 families. I mean, that's huge. Yes. And a lot of people don't know at his school, he has behavioral children in his school. So the kids that's within the public schools, they're come, he's taking them out of the public school and giving them a service of people. You know, they have IEPs, behavior issues, mm-hmm. everything. He has what they call the worst of the worst. Mm-hmm. But he's literally changing these kids' lives. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Kudos. Kudos. King so, James. So, yes. Yeah, not bad. Yes. So I like that part of him. Okay. But player-wise, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So um, do you have any major projects or anything coming up besides the two movies? Um, and- yeah. Uh, I've got Killer B&B. If you're a fan of Zane, the author, you know, Sex Chronicles okay. back in the day. Yes. And she's doing films now, so we collabed. Uh, and we have a film coming out called Killer B&B. No. Um, and it's going to be out later on this year. We're excited about that. Um, also, we have a um, have a film coming out with, uh, with uh, Tanisha, uh, who is a comedian. And so we, what we did was we took um, uh, all female comedians from all over the country, flew them in, stuck them in one house, put up a camera, and we let them compete to see who was the funniest. The funniest. The winner got $10,000. Okay. And uh, and when I say you're going to laugh your head off, you're going to (laughs) laugh your head off. So we've got that coming out. And then um, I've got some other projects that are are coming out as well that we're really excited about. Um, I am John Gabbana. Uh, If you remember Boot Game, who was um, part of that uh, whole uh, early on in social media that was doing a whole bunch of pranks and all this, this and that. <laughs> yeah. But the young man found God. And oh, right wow. now he's he's preaching the gospel and he I think he used to have six million followers and now he shut down his account, changed his name to John Gabon. I think two million followed him, but he's always preaching, he's always bringing a positive message down. And um, it's really a heartwarming story. Think um, unsung, but Put, instead of musical acts, you're, you're, you're talking about social media wow. influencers. Yeah. This is just a really good story. And wow. I did that with uh, uh, Jennifer Pacini and uh, Uncle Reese. Wow. So what I've noticed is a lot of movies that you've talked about and you've done, mm-hmm. is you create like an impact. Mm-hmm. It's like you want to be impactful for the people that's yeah, watching it. Yeah. I've noticed that. You get, you get that. <laughs> when you describe each one, it's like, okay, that's impactful. That's it's impactful. Well, it's, it, should, it should move you. And, that, and that's how I decide on what projects I want to be a part of. Yeah, I see. Right? So if I would sit down and watch it, then I would, you know, I'm like, yeah, I, I would go do it. Yeah, so you like to make a difference and change and, you know, help others. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, I mean, that's what we're here for. I mean, we're here to have fun. Um, you know, grow ourselves, make sure we sp- prosper, but we, we have a duty to, um, you know, do the right thing and make a good message. You know, at least that's the way I was brought up. Okay, so what good message do you have for us? Man, the, uh, the message today, guys, the message today is do business the right way, even okay. if it's hard. Yeah. Even if it's hard, do business the right way. And an example of this will be if I'm doing a movie and I know I haven't got paid yet as, as, as the producer, but I know my cameraman hasn't got paid and the grip person hasn't get, gotten paid, I own, I can write the checks. I can write my check first, but that's not doing good business. No, you gotta pay you them. pay buddies. everybody else first and then you come back and pay yourself. And that's hard sometimes. If you have your own bills and you're like, man, yeah, I, I, yeah. You know, I can Crunch write it. check. <laughs> but in your mind, you can't really be the boss if that's how you're looking at it. You know, and that's just a small example. Doing the right thing 
is in the confines of your old home and nobody's looking. Nobody can tell. I mean, I wouldn't be doing anything wrong if I'm writing the check to myself, but yeah. I'm, I know that that's not the right thing. So uh, we have Conscious. to challenge ourselves to do the right thing, even when no one is looking, because it's going to pay dividends. Because those same people now, if I call that that grip person, he's going to be like, yo, D, I'm, I'm rocking with you. Yeah, because they don't you. know you're going to pay. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's the um, loyalty and the communication as mm. well. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 So let's go. Let's go. Well, I want to thank you for letting me record my podcast in here. You didn't know mm. me no. or nothing, and I just hope you enjoy my stay. I really <laughs> did. It was really good, positive energy. I, I love you. people with good energy, good people. So it's a blessing that you can't do. You know, this is your home. So anytime. Thank you. I appreciate you. Even though I was, I was, I've been nervous. I even missed my flight this morning. Somebody said that. I ain't just seen it. <laughs> I missed my flight. I was knocked out. So I just, I really appreciate you. Wow. It's hard to come by people that have the same heart as me. <laughs> it, it's very, very hard. And you have to cherish those moments because you don't get them quite often. I agree. We don't for sure. So thank you everyone for tuning in to Life Her Podcast. Again, Havana Lounge has sponsored Life Her tonight and this amazing gentleman. I appreciate y'all and thanks.